someone to do this. Yes. Please stand up. I understand. All of us. Since I saw a few people dozing, let's do a simple exercise. Yo, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to basically provoke a thought process to start with. Right? Besides probably offering an idea and a solution. So let's all spread our hands out like this. Just spread our hands out like this. Okay? And without any thinking, very unconsciously, very naturally, close your hands so that one thumb comes on the other thumb. Alright? Just close your hands and keep them closed. One thumb will come over the other thumb. Alright? Now that's your natural stance. Right? Some of you will have your right thumb above like me. Some of you will have your left thumb above. Easy? Yeah. Yeah. Slight discomfort? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Very nice. Please sit down. <laughs> you need to make yourself a little uncomfortable because if you're talking about protection from cyber attacks, I think it's a zone of no comfort because I don't think we are seeing the clear and current danger that it poses to us. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to raise a few issues, right? This is what my favorite philosopher said. I cannot teach anyone anything, I can only make you think. Greek philosopher, any idea who said this? Take a guess, you've gone back to sleep. <laughs> Who's the Greek philosopher who said this? Aristotle. Aristotle. I don't know why that name always comes to me. Aristotle's guru. Plato's guru. Socrates. Yeah, so I, I basically am a leadership coach and a management consultant. And I always say that, you know, Socrates said this, I cannot teach anyone anything, I can only make you think. Provoke a thought process so that people can think better and come up with better ideas. Right? So that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to make you think, right? So thank you Gautam for inviting me, I'm happy to be here as a part of the IPAI Forum on the <coughs> Asia Energy Security Summit, right? And the question to ask is, I was told to speak on protection of critical infrastructure from cyber attacks. The question to ask is, are we truly planning to be prepared? Are we truly planning to be prepared? What do you think? Do any of you have any ideas about what kind of cyber attacks are happening? Maru spoke about how the power plants around Delhi could be shut down. And I think it's very clear and current danger. Would you agree with me? Yes or no? Yes. Yes? yes? Okay, so let's go ahead. Do you remember this? Yes. What is this? 9-11, right? Okay, so everybody knows 9-11 because the attacks finally happened. How many of you know how many attempts were done on the World Trade Center before? Sorry? There were two major attempts. One was on February 26, 1993, exactly nine years, maybe plus. And then one was just two years before 9 11. One was a truck bomb, which was put in there. Unfortunately, it didn't collapse the towers. And then there was a two, two cars which were put into the towers and the, the, the bomb did not detonate. So that's exactly what happened in the United States of America. People were caught sleeping because they refused to accept that there is clear and current danger. And I remember I was, uh, I was at the security summit organized by APAI in 2009 after another incident happened. Do you remember this? What is this? 26 11, right? And the terrorist two states which are significant to that particular country. Any idea what is the significance of 26 11 in India? Besides the terror attacks? No? None of you know? What is the significance of 26 11? It's the day our constitution was adopted in 1949. And security is a part of our constitution. Right? So 26 11, again, we were caught napping because we knew about the danger, but we didn't take any action. Now, the United States of America swung into action after 9 11, and they have homeland security. And I'm going to make a few very candid remarks over here, so don't mind my being politically incorrect. India also swung into action and people sp thought, uh, spoke about doing something for homeland security. And they formed a few bodies which included NatGrid, which has very poor little to show in terms of homeland security in India. All of you know of NatGrid, right? People took big fat salaries over there but didn't do much. Where is the grid? I think we need to ask ourselves some simple but important questions. What is happening with our security? Right? So that's 26 level. I remember the IPAI Security Summit in 2009. I think Maruf was also there. And I forget this gentleman's name. 
But I said now that we are protecting all our imperialistic structures, the terrorists would now, if I was a terrorist, and I agree, agree with Maruf that you need to think like a terrorist or a cyber attacker to understand what their next move would be. And I remember voicing my thoughts over there and I spoke about how if I was a terrorist, I would now target schools, colleges and residential blocks, which are very unprotected. And this man, he was from Israel, former Mossad, and now runs a big security agency which protects the rich and the famous. And he said, Jerry, that will never happen because the terrorists would not like public sympathy to be withdrawn. So they would never attack children and students. And that happened around two years ago. Right? Because there's no public sympathy that these people care about. What they care about is creating havoc so that their cause is heard about. So there are several people out there who are very, very angry. And they want to attack imperialistic structures. And they don't need to go out and do a 9-11 anymore. Because simply from their drawing rooms and from their computers, they can create a lot of havoc. Right? So Israel has woken up to this long, long ago, and they're probably more prepared than us, but are they really very prepared for cyber attacks? I don't know, right? So that's the clear and current danger, right? This is your critical infrastructure. Can you see that? The 16 sectors which have been identified by several governments as critical infrastructure, energy being the major one, right? So energy is your most major critical infrastructure, which has a huge, threat in terms of cyber attacks. Two attacks have already happened. This is from a source called CrowdStrike. And this happened in the United States. And another attack which happened in Germany. Right? So there are attacks happening, but are they being reported to? That's another question to ask. Right? How many of you know of Google? Do you all know of Google? Yeah. Yes or no? Can you find everything on Google? Almost. Almost? Yeah. What, what can you find on Google? The Sorry? The name of the pawn shop around the corner. The name of the pawn shop around the corner, right? You can find everything on Google. Yeah. Yes or no? Okay. Except peace of mind, probably. Yeah. <laughs> all right? But you can't find a lot of things on the Google because there's much more beneath Google, which Google can't even reach. It's called the deep web. And a whole lot of websites exist which you don't know about. And deeper than the deep web is something called the dark web. Now, the deep web need not be something which is dangerous and risky because there's a whole lot of other things over there, including medical records, legal documents, and so on. But the dark web is a very, very dangerous space. And that's where Google can't even penetrate because these people actually kind of invest in not being searched. And that's where the terrorists and the e-terrorism comes from, right? And if you're a good hacker, you can actually enter into any system and create a blackout, create a nuclear disaster. You don't need to go to war with big armies anymore. So while we invest a lot in armaments and everything, we have clear and current danger. But have we woken up to it is the big question mark, right? That's your dark net. And e-terrorism is the future. It's going to happen. It's not like... It won't happen because they won't do something like that. They will do something like that because they are very angry and we need to kind of be prepared for that, right? So there was a body called Operation, Operation Onimus which was existential for around three years and they basically tried to find all these terrorist activities, cyber attack activities which were happening in the dark net. But due to some ethical reasons, it was shut down, right? And that's what it's called, the Onion Router. Any idea why it's called the onion router? Sorry? But there are several layers, there are several layers and you won't even know what to do. Right? Because you can't find this guy. It's not as easy as finding the local pawn shop. Right? So this is a clear, clear and current danger and I think we need to be very prepared for this. So are we prepared for this? I really don't know. Let me show you one video just to reinforce this. Fine, because as you had said, when you released from jail and you was beginning uh, after parole, I'm out of that business. But are you, a lot of folks say that if someone came in and they needed your help and, and wanted to die, the, the, the jack of working would help, would you? Or it would help when they deserve it. Dear Fox News, it is still your attention 
that you have been alienating the American people by propagating the left right false dichotomy, promoting the fear by exaggerating the threat of terrorist attacks, supporting the corporate astroturf to Tea Party, and trying to pass it off as a grassroots movement, and covering up corporate corruption by forcing your employees to lie on the air, by participating in an orchestrated attempt to misinform the general public, you have chosen your side. You are against the people. All right, so what did you see there? Sorry? Hijacking. Who hijacked it? Anonymous, right? So that, that's the group, Anonymous, which hijacked that entire program. Of course, we wish somebody could do something like that to Arnab Goswami, but that's not an issue. Right? So, right? so that was a group called Anonymous, which actually hacked into the Fox News prime time news and disrupted an entire news uh, program. Right? So these guys can do anything and, and Anonymous is like, uh, very, very, very angry and so they're especially angry with the United States of America because they feel that a lot of things need to change with the imperialistic attitude. Right? Thank you, okay. What do you see there? <clears throat> what do you see there? Sorry? Hammerheads, right? So that's a pool of sharks actually, right? Yeah, and that's what the dark net is all about. It's a pool of sharks, people out there who can create havoc with terrorist activities, cyber attacks on nuclear plants and power plants and a whole lot of other energy infrastructure. What we require, and this is the idea, is a NEMO network. You know what NEMO stands for? What the, what's the meaning of NEMO? No name. No name. Nemo is a Latin word for nobody. No name. And there are several hackers out there who are ethical hackers. Is there a possibility that I watch with uh, Commander Gautam Nanda could probably create the Nemo network which could probably look into the dark net and watch the dark net, become the watchdogs to observe what are the activities happening over there. I'm not saying we can eliminate all risk but we can probably mitigate the risk. So this is the clear and current danger that we live with. And thank you so much.